Hello, hello. Roshi is here. Today we've got updates. Um, some exciting changes have happened. A lot of cards got nerfed. Um, got some pretty cool buffs and a few side grades too, which is pretty cool. Um, definitely can never complain about that, uh, you know, shaking things up. Um, what they've done is... Uh, Pretty cool. I, uh, they went ahead and added the changes to the game, so I won't pull up the, uh, the update on the internet, because I don't need to. See all these, uh, nice pretty pictures right here. Um, anyway, um, as you can see, and as I don't know put in chat, uh, somehow, Jek and Milos have once again managed to dodge a nerf. Um, they have continued to make up the majority of any fire-based deck, just automatically plays eight of them. Uh, if I had to pick a card that was most commonly included in, like, the most events <laughs> over the past, you know, few months, it would probably be Jek and Milos, because... You know, if you're just playing an aggressive fire deck, you just slap four of each in there and call it a deck. Build the rest of the deck around that, and honestly, you won't be doing bad. Uh, I'm sure you guys have heard me complain about that enough, and I probably shouldn't start my intro to the nerf and buff video by complaining, because it's been a while since we've had any balance changes. Um, compared, compared to their usual rate, uh, they seem to have maybe slowed down. I don't know if that's because things are getting balanced, or if maybe COVID's causing things to slow down. But I, I wanted to talk about the changes and uh, go through them. For a click, for a quick too long didn't read or too long didn't watch, Blight Moth's real good these days. They made a lot of cards now either trade directly with Blight Moth or get shrink to a point where they trade with Blight Moth. And uh, a couple other random things got mildly nerfed. Um, well, that's pretty much it. Uh, other than that, we might see a resurgence of Praxis Pledge in, uh, you know, Throne. And uh, we get to revisit the joys of every single Justice Market having easy removal to pull out at any given time to set you back a mile. And that's always fun to have. So, uh... Yes, I'm being mildly sarcastic. I find it kind of annoying. Uh, we also have Yeti Aggro exists again. And uh, other than that, just some random buffs of cards that just probably don't see a lot of play. Uh, I'm going to go through each card in depth, but I just wanted to give a quick little overview in case anyone, uh, you know, is pressed for time. So, first things first, Kira got the axe here. Um, unfortunately, I can't click on it to make it bigger. But, uh, Kira Ascending is now 2-1. Uh, everything else stayed exactly the same. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be enough to bring her down. But, dying to Blight Moth is a real thing. She now dies to basically anyone looking at her. Until she has 6 Justice. And then it doesn't matter. Um, but... I don't really think her power and toughness were really the issue. I don't know. It would have been nice to maybe see, like, her lose Endurance. So, like, Permafrost could, like, exist again. Um, but whatever. I'll take I'll take having Blight Moth answer Kira's as a win. Uh, next up, Argent Point Instigator. It is now a 3-2. Uh, honestly, this means, this means more than it seems. So... In the past, with uh, the Inspire Minotaur, I don't remember the name of it right now, but it's a 2-3 and it inspires and it grows. Between that and Instigator, um, a lot of 2-2s just haven't cut it. Um, because against when you're playing against like a Stone Scar deck, your 2-1s and your 2-2s just slam into these Instigators and you have to like trade removal to trade up. Um, Torch doesn't even exist in Expedition. Uh, eventually they they made it so that it's just two and one shadow, and then for a while it was two and two shadow. This card seems to be getting touched quite a bit, but uh, now that it's a 3-2, what this means is more two drops are going to be relevant now. Um, 
And another cool thing to keep in mind is one of the cards Instigator was maybe holding in check is uh, Amaran Stinger. So if you're familiar with that card, it's a 3 power 2-3 that attacks and when it hits the opponent, um, it would go ahead and put a bunch of scorpions, scorpions on top of your deck. Now they have to trade their Instigator with that guy, which, you know, let's say you're on the play and you play your Stinger and they have an Instigator in play. They have to choose between losing their instigator, which they probably take, or just getting blown out by scorpions. So, uh, the fact that this will trade with more things now, uh, more cards are relevant, and I, I think that's a good thing. Uh, also, um, if you're me, this means instigator now trades with cockroach, which is a win in my book. Anyway, uh, next up, backbreaker got a, a minor cost increase. I don't think this changes very much, if anything, about the card. Maybe your curve's a little slower now, but I feel like Backbreaker is still going to be just as good. It's nice to see them tone it down a tad. There, there really aren't a lot of... Uh, it's kind of scary when Relic Weapons are this good without any support, um, but, you know... Yeah, uh, also, um, Kai Shadowstep in chat, if you can see that over in the corner, brought up a very big point. Uh, this is also a minor buff, because you can now play this in an even-handed golem deck, and I 100% think we'll be seeing, um, off the top of my head, the most obvious deck that will be happy about this is even Paladin. So the Argentport Paladin deck that plays like Golems and just a bunch of Paladins, and then now it gets four Backbreakers in the main deck. So that's cool. <laughs> uh, moving along, Senway Smuggler, uh, Lost Shift. Uh, honestly, I it makes me sad. I, I wish maybe they just left Shift on her and added Decay um, like as an addition. Um, because there's now even less shift, like, you know that big spaghetti six drop? I'll, you know, I'll pull up the, I'll pull up the card after we're done going through the other cards. But there's this big spaghetti six drop that, like, puts a bunch of shift cards into play from the void. And now we just want, lost one of the cards. Sounds like it's named Aldra. But, uh, this is a direct nerf to that deck, and... I'm not sure if you guys have played that deck, but it's still really good. Like, that deck still slaps. Um, and now it slaps a lot less harder because you used to be able to, like, go into your market every time you did it, and now you can't. So, that's kind of sad, but I guess the win of having it have Decay is pretty big. Um, it'll be exciting to play this in some of the, um, the Shrine decks where... Uh, you know, we get market access, and now our 3-2 is able to, um, you know, even if it trades into something, at least it permanently is taking free power off the board. So it's pretty sweet. Um, if a relic weapon slaps into it, it's making it smaller. Uh, minor flavor fail by it losing shift. I honestly think shift without any abilities attached to it, I, I don't think I, myself, or anyone else would complain if this card literally just added Decay and left it as is. Um, but, whatever. It's still an improvement, and I'll take it. Uh, Dark Blade Cut Purse. The ongoing theme of two drops dying to Blight Moth has continued. And, uh, honestly, I think this is good. Uh, it's very annoying playing against this card when... They'll seem to, like, curve into it and somehow have the two fire, and then on, like, turn three or turn four, you're taking, like, you know, you're taking four damage, and then five damage, and then six damage, and I feel like every time I played this against this card, it was, like, a two power six two that just flew, like, isn't chump blockable, and you combine this with some of the uh, annoyingly obnoxious follow-ups they have in Jack and Milos, which uh, should have been nerfed instead. Uh, it just was a little too much. Um, and I get why they toned this down, but... Uh, 
Yeah, I won't complain anymore. Uh, next up, we've got Daria. This is one of the side grades. She's cheaper, which is only a benefit before for her. Um, we've got a uh, Daria Warrior Poet um, being a 3-4 now. She was a 5 power 3-5. I think in the past she was a 4 power 3-5, I don't know. She got nerfed a while ago, um, but this is just a really good way to end games. These kind of Praxis decks will usually have a decent amount of power at the point when they're playing Daria, and you can use that silly little Pledge Clock Roach to uh, get her back later on, maybe after you've played some power, and uh, just get a really sick board. Uh, one thing to keep in mind... Um, Daria is now even, so maybe we'll have an even-handed Golem Pledge uh, deck. That, I mean, that sounds reasonable to me. Uh, I talked about Vanquish before. I hate this card. I wish it didn't get buffed. Very annoying. And I, I know hate is a strong word, but I just have bad memories of playing against, like, Combry decks and Rakano decks of the past. And, like, they'd just be playing all these weenies. And you'd finally slam a big creature, and in the same turn, they'd go into their market and just blow up your creature. So then they'd have a minion on the board, you have nothing, and then they just slap you with all the minions they have. And now, I get it, there's counterplay, and like it's just an efficient card, um, but at the same time, I I've got battle scars from this card, man. It this is one of those cards that's up there on the list of tilting me. And the fact that it's back, like, maybe it's not as good anymore. Like, they have definitely power creeps. Uh, I don't need to name any cards that rhyme with Schmeck and Schmilos, but, uh, moving along. Um, Moonstar Vanguard is, uh, now a 5-5. Five five. Um, oh, one thing I didn't mention, this is now even, so even-handed Golem says hello. Uh, next up, we've got Moonstone Vanguard. I'm actually really happy to see this reverted. Um, when it was nerfed, it seemed like... It's kind of... It's kind of a sketchy nerf. It was kind of a sketchy nerf in the past. I, I don't know if they needed to hit Praxis Pledge as hard as they did. And if they did, I don't think this was the card they had to hit. Um, I know for me personally, I really like the Pledge Clock Roach because my actual Clock Roach can buff the Pledge Cockroach. So, Moonstone Vanguard fits right into one of my uh, killers lists. Uh, it's a very fun card to give killer and then dark return. And, uh, you know, draw your card right away and then it's hanging around to block with, it dodges permafrost. Um, and like, giving this guy revenge or giving it killer, it's just really fun. So, it's nice to see it as a 5-5. Five five. Uh, one of the huge things about being a 5-5 five five is this card no longer dies to Jack? I shouldn't have to say this with every card, but you know what I do. This card no longer dies to Jack, so now it is playable. Very exciting. Uh, moving along, Yetis exist. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are excited to have Yetis back. I'm not one of them, but I'll let you guys have your excitement. Uh, moving along, Innate Con Inviction. Uh, four power, warp, deal three damage. This card's existed for a while, and I've always tried to make it work. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure this card is not an Expedition, so I don't know if this will be fast enough for Throne, but being able to make a 3-5 Dragon that deals plus 2 damage? Now, where my head immediately goes to is this raises the value of cards like Jotun Hurler. This, like, you know, when a Snowball's a Torch now, that's pretty solid. Um, so, we have some pretty spicy options, and I already have my playset out of this card, so maybe this will be something I mess around with, but it's cool to see some of these, like, spaghetti legends from the past that hardly ever saw play, uh, being good. Uh, one of the things I'd like to do with this card, if I was to play with it, is you could potentially put this in your market as a broker card. And the reason I say that is because it has warp. So cards that have warp are automatically better with broker, because 
you know, usually you have to wait until you get the card. Well, now, not only do you get the card, but it's going to be on top of your deck at a point in the game where you already have four power, which means you can just play it off of the top of a deck, which is the same as drawing a card. And if you're triggering that onslaught, now all of a sudden you're going to have all these dragons, and then subsequent dragons are going to make Innate Conviction do even more damage. So, I could see this as a very solid, like, you hit four power, and you warp... You put four innate convictions on top of your deck. Because honestly, sometimes with the first broker, you really don't want to put anything too expensive on top of your deck because you might not get the power to play it, like, right away. So, with innate conviction, not only are you going to be casting it off the top of your deck, so you're not actually putting, 20, like, four cards in the top 20. You're putting four cards where you can just retrieve them, and then you'll draw whatever you're supposed to draw anyway. So... I like this card. Uh, I'm excited to mess around with it. Uh, the dragon now passes the jack test, which is exciting. Um, speaking of dragons passing the jack test, it looks like this is just the dragon right here. So we'll move right along. Livia Hexweaver got a minor buff. It's so minor, it's probably not even worth talking about. But uh, now only enemy units with endurance can block. Can't block. Um, I, cool, I guess. I don't think this is going to make this see any play at all. But uh, feel free to prove me wrong. Uh, moving along, Copper Conduit. Um, this used to go in the Xenon Killers list. I could joke around. I could joke around and say that uh, it's a minor nerf because now you can't play it with Even Handed Golem. But honestly, no one was playing this card anyway. Uh... Maybe Xenon Killers will have an uprising, and maybe this card will be a part of that. But I'm not, I'm pretty sure we've power creeped past the point where Copper Conduit is good. But uh, for those of you that aren't sh aware of Xenon Killers, I kind of mentioned a similar version. Uh, my version played like Clock Roaches and Moonstar Vanguards and stuff, and tried to give them revenge and killer and dark return them. Well, this does the same thing, but you're giving, like, Sandstorm Titan Dark Return and Killer, or you're giving Copper Conduit, and each time you cast it, you can actually spend more power into it, and it'll retain all the buffs. And since this has Overwhelm, you'll just trample over whatever they have, and eventually it gets out of hand. Now, one thing to keep in mind, when this deck was around, um, Turn to Seed didn't exist. And Turn to Seed now exists, so it's nice to have additional threats, so you can maybe... Um, one of the cool things is we can kind of balance out our deck now, where if you really hate Turn to Seed, for one thing, you can just add four Hermit Gardeners to the deck, and that could be one way of dealing with Hermit, uh, Turn to Seed. But the other thing you can do is, uh, rather than playing four ofs of all of your threats, there's so much crap in Throne right now, so you can just go ahead and uh, play two Copper Conduits, two of something else, two of something else, and then that turn to Seed's really only putting one or two Seeds in, and it's not wrecking you as hard. But uh, that's enough turn to Seed tech for now. Woda got a buff, and all I can say is, whoa, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that was bad, I'm sorry. But uh, plus three, plus three, and invoke. Um, still summon invoke. But now its uh, ability is pay six to give him the buff. And the buff will immediately trigger his mastery and draw you a card, which is sweet. Uh, being a two four means he still dies to Jack, which is obviously fun. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think this is so... Like, this is going to be a fringe playable card. I don't know. The decks I know that would want this are like my, uh, I guess I'd say mine and Drosla's now, because he's played it since then. But uh, the Arc Magister Portal decks really like these invoke cards, because you invoke some random draft card, and then you play it, and then, like, you know, it'll still get plus two, plus two, or plus four, plus four, so... Creating the two bodies, like this guy comes down, and if you've got an Arc Magister's Portal in play, he'll be a 4 6 that draws you another draft card <laughs> that, you know, comes down, and maybe that gets plus 2, plus 2. And even if it's a 1 1, just slamming a 1 power 3 3, like, you know, you could do a lot worse. So, 
Uh, Wodats colon D. Uh, Crown of Authority. Um, yeah. I, I think it needed a lot more. If you're going to have a relic like this that does absolutely nothing when it enters play, it, it needs more stats. Like, like, you know, I could play Crown of Authority, or I could just play Svetya. Like, what's what's encouraging me to play Crown of Authority over Svetya? You know what I mean? Um, one thing I'd like to see... Um, ultimate, pay 7 to draw a unit of your choice with cost 7 or more from your deck. If they could tweak... If they could tweak this ultimate down a tad, um, all of a sudden, Barry's Mandrake exists. You know, being seven means now you have to spend four power to do it, but imagine if this was a six. Like, the difference between four and three power, you know, that can get pretty big. Or, like, what if this was, like, ultimate pay four? Or, like, something more reasonable? Um, but... As chat's mentioning, there are ways to cheat this into play, but at no time would you ever pick this over Pit of Lenecta or Chains. And, like, if you're ramping into this, you're probably playing a Justice deck, and if you're playing a Justice deck, just play Svetya. Like, what? <laughs> you don't bother with Crown. So, I don't know. I, I think this needed more. This needs to be cheaper, or it needs to be, like... The Inspire needs to be something ridiculous. Like, plus four, plus four, just making big fat minions doesn't cut it. Let's have it be like plus four, plus four in Aegis. That would be what it took for this card to see play. Or like, plus, plus, plus four, plus four, units you draw get revenge. Like, something like that. It would need to be really stellar to, uh... Like, if you're gonna have this, like, ridiculous like spaghetti relic it needs to really do something ridiculous and spaghetti like martyrs chains comes in and you play power and it kills something and it doubles the health of your board or like pit of lenecta makes 14 power and toughness on the board when you play a power so like you compare that to crown which comes into play and dies to their one power relic removal and does nothing like if you want to use the ultimate right away to like get value out of it so you're going to spend seven power on your crown then you're going to spend seven power on your ultimate and then you're going to draw a seven drop or maybe even more expensive and you're going to spend you know seven to ten or eight power on that so you're telling me you're going to just casually spend 21 power while your opponent just sits there and does nothing i <laughs> I don't know. I, I spent too much time on this card. Uh, Relentless Gorehorn got a buff. And that's kind of cool. It's been a while since Tavrod decks have been around. They used to be the bane of my existence, but honestly, there's things I hate more these days. And I think it would be some nice variety to have some Minotaurs back in the meta. So maybe this is, you know, having a 4 power 5 3 doesn't sound too broken these days. Um. Especially when it just dies to Jack. So, yeah, that's uh, that's the end of the line. Uh, I wanted to bring up the card. I said I would show off the card that now no longer works with uh, the market. So we'll go ahead and pull that up. So Aldra the Veil Ripper is very sad. Um, what this used to do is you would play your market, your Stone Scar Merchant, and uh, grab something from the Void. Maybe your market. Maybe you grab Aldra from your market, honestly. And then you play Aldra, and like after you've traded off your guys, or they've died to removal, or whatever, you play Aldra, and you just get them back again, and go into your market. So, it was just a... You know, it was a sweet deck, and the fact that the a market grabber had shift kind of enabled this card, like, pretty hardcore. Because just flipping into your market over and over again is a great way to win a game. And, uh... 
Yeah, kind of a shame to see that take a hit. I don't... I highly doubt that was intended. I'm sure they just forgot this card existed. But, uh, I didn't forget. And, uh... It was a fun deck. Uh, it was very aggressive, actually. Which is probably why I haven't played it live or made any videos for it. Because that's not really my style. But, when I did play it, I had a lot of fun with it. And it seemed like a very cool synergy. Um, but maybe, you know, it was time for it to die. So... That was my opinion on the new shit.